Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking through my birth story. If any of you didn't see my Instagram post, I had a little boy on the 19th of May 2024 at 2.08 p.m. He was born six pounds 15 ounces so he was a little bit bigger than my first baby and I successfully had a vaginal delivery after having a c-section with my previous baby which is what I wanted. Sorry guys the light it might have just changed. My light that I used to film just died so we're gonna have to ignore that. I really wanted to achieve a v-back after having an emergency c-section with my first baby and I achieved that and I went into spontaneous labor and everything that I wanted to happen happened. I was going to do a like meet my baby gender reveal name reveal but I have already posted it on my Instagram and I'm sure most of you would have already seen. His name's Arthur Aiden Thomas ward so he has joseph's last name same as oliver we're so obsessed with him he's currently napping in his bassinet so if you hear any like cooing or baby noises that is him so if he wakes at all during this i will bring him on camera to show you but for now let's get into my birth story but the week leading up to my birth i was getting a lot of braxton hicks now i know braxton hicks can literally come on at any point in your pregnancy especially in the third trimester and it doesn't mean baby is coming it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean anything but I was getting a lot of them the week leading up to my birth so I gave birth on the Sunday and so like the Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday I was getting loads of Braxton Hicks like my pelvis was really really sore and just everything just felt a bit more heavy but on the Tuesday before I gave birth so Tuesday the 14th I had my 38 week scan I was meant to have a 37 week scan but I had to cancel it. So I had my 38 week scan and during my 38 week scan, I had mentioned to them that I really wanted to obviously have a V back, um, which they'd known up until this point, but I had said to them that if it came to me being 41 weeks, I want to just book myself in for an elective c-section and the doctor that I had had I'd never had him before he was completely new to me um he basically he was a bit off I couldn't explain it he just was a bit like he he wasn't anti v-back but he he wasn't very like yeah let's do it he was just kind of like you know the risks and it's very risky and I was like yes but then when I suggested to not suggested when I asked him could I book in my c-section for 41 weeks he was like but do you want the v-back or not so I was like do you know like that this baby can only come out one of two ways because you're not suggesting the v-back but you're also discouraging against the c-section so I don't know he told me that basically they wouldn't book it then and there but he said he was going to book me in for another hospital visit at 39 weeks and if I hadn't gone into labor by then which I'll get into that he will book it there so i said right perfect that's fine like i was happy with that i was happy enough that he was like yeah that's fine and he checked my bump like as i measured it my bump was measuring good and then he did the ultrasound and he was doing the ultrasound for ages and i was like what is going on and he goes right so baby's engaged everything like that really low down and he says to me he goes if you make it to 39 weeks which i don't think you will he goes, we'll book you in for that section for 41 weeks. And I was like, what? I was like, you actually think I'm going to go before then? So this was on the Tuesday. So I had until the following Monday. Because my due date, I wasn't telling anyone, but my due date was the 27th of May. And I was like, you really think I'm not going to make it to 40 weeks? And as we all know, if anyone's watched like any of my baby videos, um, I really, really wanted to go into spontaneous labor and I've been doing absolutely everything this time around. This time around, I've been really looking after myself, making sure I'm getting a load of exercise, eating really well. Whereas last time with Oliver, it was the depths of winter. I literally stayed in bed all day, ate shit, gained a load of weight. Like it, I did not do myself any justice on my first pregnancy but this pregnancy I really wanted it to go the way I wanted it to go so I was doing everything in my power so he said that I came out of that appointment and I was kind of like I didn't want to take it 
literally because obviously anything ha can happen like this baby could turn around and be like i'm not ready to come out you know so i wasn't trying to get my hopes up but my mum was actually just home from a week in spain and she was going to be staying with us anyways when i was having this baby and she was planning to go back to mayo where her partner lives where she pretty much lives all the time and i was like i don't think i can let you go because i genuinely think this could happen at any point but we didn't tell anyone that this what was said we kind of just kept it to ourselves because we just didn't want the pressure and that was one thing that is the reason why i kept everything a secret this time like the due date and just a, like the name and everything like that so come out of that appointment and i'm like right if this is gonna happen we're gonna make it happen so i was on my ball all the time i was going for walks i was like doing everything i possibly could to get this baby out so then like i said back with the braxton hicks the braxton hicks were coming so strong after that appointment and they were coming on at about five six o'clock in the evening and then i would go to bed and i would try to sleep it off and i would and i'd wake up fine and this was happening the tuesday the wednesday the thursday the friday and then on the friday night i went to bed and then may 18th which was a saturday i woke up at 5 a.m with contractions i didn't know whether they were braxton hicks or whether they were contractions at first because they kind of felt the same as my braxton hicks but at the same time i was up and moving and drinking water and they weren't going away i usually get up with oliver in the mornings and I had to wake Joseph up because I was timing them and they were like three minutes apart. They were lasting like only about 20 seconds. But because they were so consistent, I was like, this could be the start of it. And they were quite, they weren't, they weren't painful. Like they weren't taking my breath away, but they were just like really strong period pains. So I woke Joseph up and I was like, here, you're going to have to help me get Oliver up. I was like, I can't do this myself. I was like, because if he needs me and I'm in the middle of one of these, I was like, I'm... I just, I don't want to have to worry about him. So he got up with me and Joseph, I don't think he believed me. I don't think he, not that he didn't believe me. I don't think he thought that these were the contractions because with the VBAC as well, you want to be laboring at home for as long as possible. You don't want to go into the hospital very soon because a lot of the times it can end up in a C-section. So I think he was just trying to keep like that kind of mindset of like, no, you're fine. Just chill out like keep it easy then he suggested why don't we go for a walk to the shop and we'll go get like some breakfast and you know we'll just see if walking it off helps so i was timing them and timing them the whole walk up to the shop we got breakfast rolls the whole way back and i was getting them and i was still getting them and i just knew i was like i feel like this is the start of it may 18th is actually my granny's birthday and we had all joked being like oh watch it be on my granny's birthday because not only is it my granny's birthday it's my auntie's birthday it's a family friend's birthday it's another family friend's birthday and we were like we, just what would be the chances that this baby comes on my granny's birthday but the reason i'm saying that is because that day i we had a birthday a surprise birthday lunch slash dinner booked for my granny and i was like i don't know if i'm gonna be able to go because these were these were still quite painful like they were ramping up to about 40 seconds at this point so then once the like we had our breakfast and whatever it was then time for oliver to go down for a nap and joseph was like look we need to do the food shop today because we do food shop on a saturday he was like i'll go do the food shop while oliver's down for his nap and while oliver's down for his nap you take a nap yourself to see again because it's been the case that every time I go to sleep, I wake up, they're gone. He was like, just try take a nap. So I was like, do you know what? You're right. Let's go take a nap. So put Oliver down for his nap. And then I took a nap. And when I woke up, contractions, gone. Gone. And I was like, no. I was really hoping it was labour because at this point, I'm 38 days plus five. So I was like really hoping that they weren't gonna go but they had gone they had disappeared and i got ready for them for my granny's birthday and i was like look i might as well go out so we go out for my granny's birthday and i'm absolutely fine in the beginning like everything's good and then halfway through the meal they start up again i just remember looking at my mom and my mom looked at me and she was like are you okay i was like no i'm not okay and we didn't want to tell my granny we didn't want to tell anyone what was going on because 
I again I didn't want the pressure of it to stop the contractions and I didn't want like the worry to like affect my granny's meal as well like it wouldn't be fair in her it's her birthday I didn't want it I didn't want to make it about me they started coming on during the meal and I was really having to like breathe through them while also trying to hold conversations and stuff like that and look after Oliver we had finished all of our food and they we were just everyone was just having drinks at this point and luckily because I had Oliver I was able to be like Oliver's in bed for eight o'clock so we need to get him home by like late as half seven to do bath bottle bed and it just worked out that that was the case so I just kept saying to mom like mom we need to go like I need to get Oliver because I had gone in with mom I was like mom like we need to go I need to get Oliver to bed but it was the fact that these contractions were coming on so much more that was fine we left I was contracting in the car and then when I got home uh, we put Oliver to bed and then I decided to have a bath because I was like if I get in the bath it'll soothe them so got in the bath and once again they disappeared i was getting them maybe one every like 10 minutes but like nothing crazy and i was getting like really really annoyed them because it's, i had been in and out of these contractions like it was a labor but it was just messing with my head because i was like it um is it going to be the case that i'm going to be in labor for days or is it the case that like these aren't e this isn't even labor but now that now i know it's labor then after the bath i was like right i'm gonna go to bed it was about 10 o'clock i was like look i'm gonna go to bed try sleep it off because if it is the case that these come on and off while these are off i need to get as much rest as possible because i feel like tomorrow is the day so then that night i got woken up twice with really bad contractions that physically woke me up and kept me awake the first one i don't remember the time that this happened at no idea couldn't tell you because i i fell back asleep but then the second one was at 1 a.m on may 19th and i woke up and it was sharp it was there like i felt every bit of it so i then realized right okay this is it because it 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 hurt me so i was like right i'm gonna try to go back to sleep couldn't go back to sleep so i was like okay another one came on then i was like right i feel like i'm gonna have to start timing these again while this was happening joseph was downstairs and he comes up literally as the second contraction came on and he had been up watching the tyson fury fight and i just turned to him and i said i think this is it and he was like what he's like nah and i was like no joseph i actually think this is it now i think this is the start of like where they're gonna start getting like really painful and this is at, like one half one at this point and he was like right i need to go to bed because if you need to go to the hospital like i need sleep so he went to bed so i just sat on the side of our bed and i had my phone out i had a contraction timer and i was just timing them and timing them and they were like pretty sore like i had to really breathe through them kind of like sway myself through them but they weren't bad enough that like i was screaming or like yelling or anything like that so these were about 30 to 40 seconds long and they were lasting between or they were every three to five minutes and then over the next three hours they had ramped up to between 60 and 90 seconds long and they were coming consistently every three minutes this is when i knew at this point look these are getting pretty painful however i don't know with like where i am in this process i don't know if i'm dilated i don't know like how painful they should be getting to the point where like i need to go to the hospital but because they were so long lasting and they were coming very consistently three minutes i was like these are only going to get stronger and closer together so i was like right i'm going to quickly go eat something because i knew that once i got to the hospital they'd probably be telling me to fast um just in case of a c-section because i had a c-section before so i went downstairs i made myself a bagel and then when i came back up once again these were like they were these were pretty so we're like i'm not gonna lie these were sore so i decided to ring the hospital because my situation is i can live depending on traffic up to two hours away from my hospital on a good day an hour so i knew i was pretty far away and anything can happen within an hour to two hours so i rang my hospital and i got put into a lovely midwife and i just explained to her and she just basically asked me like how far along i was she asked me was this like my first or second birth she had asked me was my last birth a c-section or a vaginal birth and what i was trying for this time 
and also told her how long my contractions were and how far apart they were and I basically just said to her like look I live in Port Leach I'm about an hour away minimum so I was like do I come in or do I still wait it out and she was like well how painful are they and I was like I'm having to quite literally like breathe through these but like really think about breathing through these and she was like right okay she was like look I suggest you to come in she was like and we can suss the situation so I was like right perfect so I was like we'll pack our bags and be on our way so I woke up Joseph then and I said look I rang the hospital and this is what they suggested and he was a bit like I don't know because again to achieve a VBAC you do really need to not be at the hospital for as long as possible because intervention can really just put you at the top of the chain of like and want like ending up in a c-section so he was a bit like put off and it took him forever i'm sorry joseph i'm like this is one thing it took him forever to get up out of bed i think it was over tiredness because he had literally only been asleep by three hours and if anyone knows you know when you've been woken up and potentially you have to be in deep sleep like it's not fun so he eventually woke up and they were like getting pretty painful and i remember just telling them like come on like get going because i'm in a lot of pain because they were starting to get to the point where i literally was like <sighs> like i didn't want him talking to me i couldn't talk through them and i was like joseph these are getting quicker like these are getting longer more painful more intense i was like get your ass up so he made himself food well he made us food but i never ended up eating it he made food um like breakfast like got our bags ready and popped them in the car i then went into mom and i was like look we're heading to the hospital here's oliver's monitor good luck we'll see you when we see you so then we got into the car and everyone says that the car journey into the hospital when you're in active labor is the most horrible thing ever and uh, i can't lie it's pretty nasty i said it with oliver's birth and i'll say it with this birth being able to stand and move about helps contractions so much so when you're sitting down in a car and at such a peculiar angle as well and obviously you can't just be in different positions in the car you have to obviously have your seatbelt on i was really struggling with that and so i just said joseph i'm sticking in airpods and i put on a podcast which i'm not joking you got me through that entire car ride and i'll actually put i'll just let you know what the po it's a podcast but it's not really a podcast like it's um it's a meditation it's called the moon and stars hypnobirthing podcast on spotify and it's the breathing for labor it's only like 10 minutes long but i played it on repeat every single time i was having a contraction because she kind of talked you through the contraction and you're able to really visualize like you giving birth and like the point of a contraction and it just made that car journey so much easier i just put my headphones in i blasted it and yeah I, so that got me through the whole car journey up but the only thing i will say is i think because i was so worried and because my son joseph i got in our heads that it might not even be labor my contractions started to stop in the car they started to stop they actually ended up then ended up being like 10 minutes apart and they were very easy to get through and i started panicking then because i was like we've traveled all the way to the hospital i've woken joseph up who needs sleep to get me through this i have basically gotten us up and out of the house we've drove an hour here and they're gone like what was i gonna do when i get to the hospital oh sorry they're gone sorry one second we've got a little friend joining us he's not a happy bunny so we're just gonna have to sit back here just so we're all in frame so yeah the contractions then die down and i was really really struggling with that in the car because i was just like what is is this gonna be a waste of a journey so then once i we got to the hospital i was in the national maternity hospital in dublin um i was in hollow street and if anyone knows parking on hollow street you park you park on the road like there's no parking for the hospital um, but it was a sunday so it was free parking which we were delighted about because it just meant that we didn't have to think about it like joseph didn't have to run out to the car and put money in the meter like it was it was fine so we parked up and when i got out my contractions started again and started sore i had to 
really breathe through these like luckily it was what five o'clock in the morning at this point like, there was no cars around because i would have looked like an absolute idiot just standing in the middle of the road like hands on my knees bent over just trying to breathe through these contractions but anyways we got into the hospital and we were met with security obviously because it was like middle of the night and, like the hospital wasn't just open they called to admin and then admin brought us through and the lady who was in the admissions office she was so lovely bless her when i was having a contraction she was like not speaking to me like she was just letting me get through it and then she'd speak to me after and i'm sure that's protocol anyways i'm sure they do that anyways but it's just nice to know that they don't they're not just dismissing you like still talking to you through your contractions like they're obviously understanding that you have to get through them she just checked us in and you know the usual checks and then brought us up to labor and delivery which i was actually shocked by i thought they were going to put me into the day ward because when i was being induced with oliver i was put into the day ward and in the day ward it was just a lot of women laboring so i thought i was going to go in there i didn't think they were going to bring me into actual labor and delivery so when they brought me into labor and delivery then i was met with the loveliest midwife rebecca she was incredible like she was so pro v back and yeah she was just so lovely so she monitored me she checked my blood pressure did all the usuals that they do like to check you in and again she just let me do my thing she was like whatever way you want to labor like we will do it and she had said look we'll give you you know a little while to settle in and then we'll put you on the monitors and i kind of like looked at joseph and i was like I'm not sure of this because if anyone hasn't seen my birth preferences, which I will leave up in the cards if you haven't seen them, I go through all my preferences of what I wanted with his birth. And oh, I basically explained that I didn't want to be put on continuous monitoring because continuous monitoring can be falsely read. So I was like, right, that's fine. I'm going to, you know, just do it this once and then we'll talk about it after. But then as she was talking through everything, she said, we also do a monitor that is movable. It'll be strapped to you, but you know, you can move around the room. You're not strapped to the bed because again, I didn't want to be strapped to the bed because trying to get your contraction pains sitting down is the worst thing in the world. She was just so lovely. She was really, really supportive and she was just talking to me about her own like experiences with labor and delivery and i was so happy to have her and she was just talking to me and she did a cervical exam and she had said that my cervix was really favorable like it was doing really well and that like basically we get through it together so i was so happy with this she then brought us out into like the corridor and she suggested like doing laps of the hospital essentially to get it moving to get things going and she also suggested there is like they i don't know if this is every hospital or whether it's just ours but it's called the hopscotch method so basically there is like if you imagine what hopscotch is you do different things for 20 minutes so one of them could be like you know either bounce on your ball or walk the stairs basically she got me to do that around the like labor and delivery section of the hospital there was a load of stairs there and she just suggested me walking them because it obviously would get things moving so then that was fine i was doing that for ages and it was great but the only thing was obviously it's a hospital there's like offices not offices but like oh well yeah offices in the hospital where obviously midwives go to do their admin and so out there there was just like a load of like chatter and laughter and just like people talking and i struggled to get through my contractions because i couldn't focus i wasn't able to like get in that zone so i said joseph i was like can we just go back to the room so we went back to the room and then i had said to rebecca the lovely midwife i said oh like how long are you on shift for because i really wanted her like i really wanted her as my midwife and she goes i'm actually nearly done and i was devastated i was absolutely devastated because she had just been so lovely and so supportive of this feedback and like just really really like understanding of what i wanted without me even having to tell her so when she said she wasn't gonna be on shift i was so worried that i was gonna get a midwife that just didn't respect me or didn't respect my wishes or when we've been at that hospital before we've had some midwives tell us that like look you won't always get a good midwife like there's some of them are a bit you know 
not the best and obviously you can request to have a change of midwife like it's no problem at all but I was just like oh, I'm not a confrontational person and especially when I'm in a vulnerable position I'm also not about to be confrontational so I just really hope that we're gonna get a good midwife so then I went back out and I did the stairs again and as I was on the stairs I got introduced to my new midwife who guys I've already put in oh we have a very unhappy baby that makes me hurt I got put with the most incredible incredible midwife that I could have ever asked for and who ended up being my midwife when I delivered this little man and her name's Ashlyn and I don't know if she'll see this she probably will never see this but I ended up having to put in a massive massive um what are, not what what's the opposite of a complaint like a compliment um into the hospital and I made sure she saw it as well because I just she is the reason I have my VBAC I'm telling you now like uh, I literally could not have done this without her she was the most incredible midwife the most supportive midwife for a VBAC I could literally have ever asked for she was so I'll get into it but just know that this woman I will forever be grateful so we had her and then we also had a student midwife Margaret who was lovely so when I was introduced to her she was just chatting to me again just getting to know us and stuff like that and again she didn't talk to me through like my contractions she just let me do my thing and then when they started to ramp up she was like do you want to have a shower and I just for some reason it had been put out of my head that I could have a shower I always knew I couldn't have a pool like I couldn't get in the pool but she was like the showers really really help with you know the pain so I was like sure anything to help at this point because again these were still lost in like 60 to 90 seconds they were pretty intense and they were just they were just yeah coming so soon so often so I got in the shower and I was in the shower for ages and ages and ages and then she put on the monitor the movable monitor so yeah I then was in the shower for a while they had the continuous monitor on me and then she wanted to do a cervical check for me as well I said of course so every time she checked me for a cervical exam she would never tell me how dilated I was she just kept telling me how um my cervix is really favorable it's doing really well it's like breaking down really well like everything is going well and I'm so glad she never told me how dilated I was because I think with how much pain I had already been in for the past like over 24 hours at this point and how intense the pains were getting I think if she had told me then and there at that very first exam how dilated I was I think it would have really discouraged me for the rest of it so it was kind of like just a couple of hours of constantly you know just laboring and just getting through these contractions i ended up not using my comb i tried the gas in the air for one puff and decided it just i didn't like the idea of being in that much pain and feeling really lightheaded i really freaked me out it wasn't the nausea it was just it really freaked me out and even though joseph like kept encouraging me to use it just to even get myself out of the pain even a little bit but it just it, in the moment it really freaked me out and then Ashlyn again was amazing she just constantly was giving me different ways of laboring she suggested you know getting the peanut ball between my legs she suggested putting the ball up on the bed and me like lying on the ball she then brought the bars up from the bottom of the bed and she put like I think it was like a towel over it and for me to hunch down and hold it just to kind of like really open up my hips and stuff like that like there was so many that she was suggesting and she just was so encouraging like it was getting to the point where I was really starting to struggle and starting to give up because it was just continuous of this and her continuously like just encouraging me but like she was encouraging me in ways not that was like oh it's okay like you can do it like she was like no you've got this like it was very like serious compliment do you know what I mean like it was very just encouraging with like force like no you can do this like you've got this like you have this like you're doing well 
and that just really kept me going for a lot longer than I think I would have had I not had her or had I not had her support because it just was yeah it just was one of those situations where I didn't need my baby and I needed someone to give me like a bit tough love but like in the right way like it wasn't in a bad way it was in the best way possible it was almost like in women empowerment type of way like she had been through it before she knew what it was like she was like you've got this hours and hours had gone by at this point and they were starting to get to the point where they were back to back like I was not I was getting maybe a 30 second break in between like they were they were getting pretty intense and I was starting to get to the point where I was really thinking about an epidural and I just I just knew that I was trying to hold out as long as possible but because I didn't know how far along I was dilation wise I didn't know if I was going to be able to keep going I also just want to mention when we're, when I was with the other midwife Rebecca she had been like when do you want your waters broke and I knew I wanted to leave it as long as possible because once your waters break the pains kind of well for me anyways the pains ramped up a lot with Oliver so I knew it potentially would be the same with this so I was like if I can keep going at this pace for as long as possible then I'll, like I'll be okay she just suggested me she was like look I'm suggesting to break your water she was like just get things going a lot better um because obviously once water is break baby can tend to kind of come down a bit lower so I was like do you know what fuck it do it just do it so yeah, I didn't want my waters broke. I want them to break naturally, but I just knew with how long I had been laboring at this point. And this was the part that I was really struggling with because I had been laboring since 5 a.m. the previous day and I was running on very little sleep. I was struggling energy wise. I was so tired. Like, I was initially nearly falling asleep, but obviously I couldn't sleep because I had contractions. But also, I was struggling to keep myself upright, but the only reason I was keeping myself upright was because the pains were easier to get through so it was I was starting to have like that mental block we popped my waters I don't know what time this was at I could not tell you what time they popped my waters at at this point time was irrelevant to me like I did not know what time it was but she popped my waters and they were obviously must have been all clear and then uh she just suggested to go sit in the toilet just so the rest of the waters can kind of like come out i sat in the toilet and this is where they ramped up like these aids ramped up they went from being quite intense to even more intense and the only way i can explain it is the start of the contraction will go up in a very very high surge and then it would come down but it wouldn't go away it would kind of like just come down a little bit and then it would soar and then it would come down and it would die off and then I'd get my break but they these were lasting like a minute and a half like I'm not joking you when I say it was like a soar a kind of little bit of a dip to then a massive surge and then it would die off and it was the same every single time because with Oliver I couldn't talk through my contractions this time around you heard me you heard me I was mooing for the gods like that's all I can explain it how I was reacting I was mooing like like a literal cow that's how I was getting through them like they were so incredibly painful and I think what ended up me cutting my pains short was the fact that my monitor the monitor that I was the movable monitor as I called it um they constantly had to keep adjusting it because they were losing um, Arthur's heart rate. And with Arthur's heart rate, they needed it to obviously be up. And because of my previous C-section and everything like that, they just couldn't risk anything. So then it ended up being that they wanted to do continuous monitoring on me on the bed. And I really struggled with that. I literally, oh, I remember Ashton saying to me, she was like, I'm so sorry, Leah. She was like, I need you back in the bed. And she just was so apologetic about it because she could tell that like, she, I think she knew herself and she definitely knew herself that like, I was gonna get through this labor quicker and easier being off the bed, but they had to do their protocols and monitor me on the bed. So everything was in my own time though. Like she never rushed me. She was just like, whenever that contraction ends, you know, jump on the bed. And 
I just wanted everything done as soon as my contraction was done. Like, just quickly get everything that you need to get done, done. So, she monitored me on the bed. And then, I was monitored for a while. She kept doing cervical checks. And then it got to a point where she did my last cervical check. That I remember. And I went back in the shower. Because, like I said, the shower was just something that I found easiest to be in like it helped me so much if i can suggest to anyone getting in water really 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 helps with contractions i don't know whether it's the heat relaxing the muscles i don't know what it is but it helps so much so then after the last one ashton came in and into the shower and she put she was adjusting the monitors that were on my stomach and i just said to her I said I don't think I can do this anymore she was like you can you've got this and I was like no I was like I need pain relief and she was like we can try with gas now and I was like no I was like I need the epidural and she was she kind of looked at me and I knew the look it was kind of like you can do this you can get through this you don't need the epidural but obviously she's not gonna tell me no she's not gonna like do you know what I mean like if I want an epidural like she has to give it to me and I just said to her I was like please I was like how far along am I and she was like what do you mean and I was like how do I lay it on my I was like I need to know because I need to know whether I can get through this or not and she goes you're about five centimeters and I was like I'm I I'm kind of raging now looking back but obviously I must have been in that much pain that I thought I couldn't get through another five centimeters because I just looked at her and I said I need the epidural and she was like okay and I was like please I was like please get me the epidural and she was like okay actually delayed on my epidural which is so funny because i get why she did it because i'm sure it was the case of like if i forget about that epidural like if i forget i even asked her about it and i'd be able to get along further but because there was just so much intervention with the monitors and stuff like that through no fault of hers at all obviously it just was the case and i was warned with the um with the movable monitors that they can they don't always work well so that was fine so then a couple of minutes went by and I just had a feeling she hadn't it hadn't been requested so then Joseph came into me into the bathroom because this is another thing I didn't want anyone around me I didn't want Joseph I didn't want anyone I would just want to be left alone so Joseph was in the room while I was in the bathroom in the shower but it was so funny anytime Joseph was trying to talk to me through a contraction I was like don't talk to me I literally was like stop it like please don't speak to me like it just was so hard to get through a contraction when he was talking so bless him he got snapped out so many times I actually feel so bad he got snapped out so many times so Joseph came into the bathroom and I said to him I was like ask her did she ask for the epidural and he was like yeah I will and I was like do it now I literally I was so angry I was like do it now so he was like okay so he went out and he asked her and he had told me that she had said he told me this after but she had said to him like oh no like she can get through this like she's doing so well like getting through this without any pain relief so far and joseph was like no no get her that because i think he was like i'm not getting it for not having this epidural so that was fine he she called eventually for the epidural and then in the meantime i'm not gonna lie there's a part of my brain I don't understand what happened and why it happened. Like, I'm very confused on some parts, but I'm also, they're not parts that I care enough to know about. But somehow, I ended up back in the room to be monitored again. And after the monitor, because they had to monitor me with the epidural before I got it. And then the, the anesthesiologist then came in. So they were putting a cannula in my hand they tried so many times and they really really struggled and i was bruised a bit for days after eventually got they got that in and then they started doing the epidural and the anesthesiologist he was amazing he basically was like let me know when you're in a contraction like just let me know just basically so that they don't do anything that could make me jerk it took a while he was like mapping out my back and doing everything then it was time for the actual spinal to go in and he put it in and he then was like right first dose and then a second dose but then i'll never forget joseph was in front of me like telling me like you're doing so well blah blah blah, blah. and then the anesthesiologist then turned around and goes so it'll take 30 minutes to kick in and i looked at i literally i was my head was down when he was doing this and i literally glared at joseph and i was like 
what and Joel's face just dropped I knew this but in my head I was like you are joking me I have to go through these pains for another 30 minutes are you having a shit and a giggle so that was fine I got the epidural and thankfully it did not fucking take 30 minutes to kick in it started kicking in pretty much near enough I'd say five minutes after like it was blissful my legs started to go numb I could still feel the pressure of the contractions it still felt, felt like I need to poop myself um but I, I couldn't feel the pain and then I started to become more of myself again and it was delightful like it was lovely Joseph said I literally became a new person like I became a brand new person once that epidural was in me I was just so happy and I think the reason I wasn't disappointed that I got an epidural and that I didn't have an unmedicated birth. I think the reason that I am happy this time around is because of how exhausted I was. It wasn't to do with, well, it was to do with the pain. I, I was struggling through the pain, but because of how tired I was, I really felt like I couldn't get through much more without potentially collapsing from exhaustion. So once the epidural was in, I was lying there and then Joseph was like, right, I'm gonna go get food now that you're feeling better. I was like, yeah, grand, I was like, go get food. And this was at about half one. And the reason we know this is because there was a Formula One race on at two o'clock and we really wanted to watch it now that I was better. So Joseph was like, I'll go grab food and then I'll come back. And I want, really wanted food too, but I couldn't eat because of the epidural because I could end up in a C-section. So then after I, after Joseph decided to go for the, go get food, then they were like, right, we're gonna put you back in monitoring. So I was like, now that I was, you know, out of pain, I did not care what they did at this point, I was, uh, you know I chanted to the midwives I was like happy out like they literally were like you're a new person and I was I was back to myself so then after they were doing the continuous monitor and the main I think she's like the head midwife or like maybe like the head nurse of like the ward for that day um came in and she wanted to do an internal exam on me which was absolutely fine because again it wasn't any pain so she was doing that and then next thing I, I don't see this is where I don't understand what was happening theater must have been prepped for me or I must have missed a couple of steps in between when I was in that much pain that like the midwives didn't let me know about but next thing alarms started going off on the monitor that was attached sorry I forgot to say on one of the um internals that they were doing they decided to put a little monitor on his head uh like so up my hoo-ha on his head and monitor him that way and they did this they did this with oliver when they couldn't monitor him on like, the normal like ctg machines but the alarm bells went off basically being like he is not happy and that it was getting dangerously low his heart rate so the alarm started going off on the machine and suddenly it was like right Leah you're being rushed out to theatre and I remember it just being a different situation this time I felt very calm and very at peace with being rushed out to theatre and I think it was because I knew there was always a very high possibility I was going to end up in a C-section. So I kind I think because I had mentally accepted it, it was a lot more of a peaceful situation. And the whole way down, Ashling was amazing. She was like, your baby's not happy. She was like, we're going to bring you down to theatre because you may need a C-section. I was like, may? I was like, why am I being rushed down then? She was like, you're going to try and push this baby out. That is what kind of like set off my emotions was that she was really advocating for me and advocating for my body and like my wants of VBAC and she really 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 just was pushing for it like I can't even explain it felt like everyone else in that room was like she's going for a c-section and she was like we are going to try this VBAC and she basically the whole way down as they were rushing me on this bed down to theatre they were like we're gonna try for a VBAC she was like but we are gonna need intervention she was like what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick kiwi on the top of his head so basically the suction cup um we're gonna try pull him out and like you're gonna push him but we're gonna pull at the same time because we need to get him out as quickly as we can and i just i was a bit in shock that they were even gonna let me because bear in mind i just told you like 
I had just found out I was only five centimeters dilated. How was I pushing a baby out with only being five centimeters dilated? Someone please help me. So she was saying this to me and she was like, we're really gonna try, but you know, it could end up in a section. She was like, are you okay with that? I was like, I don't have an option here. But it was weird because I was being brought down and with the C-section the last time, I had to sign off. Even though it was an emergency C-section, I had to sign off on a sheet and I never did this time. So I found that very strange. But anyways, I was raging though because I had only just got the epidural in. I was expecting to be able to enjoy this epidural for at least a couple of hours before they then potentially rush me in for a C-section if it was the case. Like I was prepared to really enjoy this epidural and take it on and like really relax and you know, chat with the midwives and just kind of like do my thing and rest and sleep potentially i just really really was annoyed that i never got to enjoy the epidural but anyways we got rushed into theater and like with oliver there was just so many people around and everyone was like leah this leah that leah this leah that like one nurse was like do you have any allergies next nurse was like you need to focus on me i need to take blood from this arm leah look at me this way i need to put like cannula in this arm then i had the anesthesiologist being like leah like have you had an epidural i was like yeah i had an epidural and he was like okay he was like can you like move your legs and I could still like move my legs a little bit and he was like right okay he was like I'm gonna top you up for an in case of a c-section and it was really funny because like I said someone had just asked me did I have any allergies and before I got to answer them another nurse turned to me and was like Leah she asked me another question and then when I went to turn back to be like yeah I'm allergic to distichlor she was gone and so I never got to say it, but I was like, oh, it's fine. Sure, like, Discord is in, like, absolutely nothing. They were like, look, we're going to try and push this baby out. You're going to need an intervention of, like, the Kiwi. And they were like, we're going to have to do an episiotomy on you. And they were like, is that okay? And I didn't realize they had to, like, they cannot perform an episiotomy on you without your permission, which I kind of get. But at the same time, I was like, I literally have no other choice here. So, yeah. But I... I had to get an APZ on me to get this baby out, to get the forceps in and everything like that. Spoiler alert, got forceps. So then it got to the point where I had been fully numbed, more numb than usual in case of a C-section. They just decided to top up my epidural by whatever I meant they needed for a potential C-section. So I was fully numbed down from like my boobs down. Then they put my feet up and they started feeling my stomach for contractions. I had my wife and then I had Ashton beside me and she just turned to me and Joseph. Sorry, yeah, Joseph wasn't there for the first bit of this. He was out getting his little roll and he said when he returned to the room, all of our bags were packed outside and he just went, not again. And apparently then a midwife was like, oh, are you Leah's partner? And he was like, yeah. And she was like, oh, she's been rushed in theater, come with me. And he was just like, really? Because this happened with Oliver. Joseph, for some reason, wasn't with me when I got rushed down to theater so he was just like fuck sake this is after happening again when i'm not there and then yeah so then he eventually arrived in once i had been like prepped and everything and he was by my head and yeah ashton just turned to the boat with us and she was like you are pushing this baby out of you and just hearing those words and how determined she was like she wanted this just as badly for me as i wanted it it was almost like it i was like a family member to her and she was really just rooting for our situation to be what we wanted it to be and the whole way through this process before I get into like actually me delivering I just want to say like I didn't tell her any of my preferences not one yet she gave me everything I wanted like she made sure I was mobile she made sure I was really going through every contraction with like such empowerment like she was making me labor in different not making me but she was like suggesting to me different ways to labor without having any pain relief like she just everything i wanted on that birth plan, it's like she watched my birth plan or something it's like she knew who i was and she watched my birth plan because she everything on there she gave me so when it came to her telling me like you're going to push this baby out of you like you are having this baby vaginally it was like she knew how to determine it I was and how much I really wanted this so then she was feeling my stomach for contractions so was the head midwife and uh, with every contraction they were like right push like you're doing like a big 
poo essentially and i was like i can't feel anything like i do not feel a thing so i don't know what i'm pushing if i'm even pushing so then she was just really encouraging she was like push 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 like so encouraging throughout the whole like pushing process and then yeah like i said they did the episiotomy and then they used four steps on him and bless him he did not look the best coming out but it literally did not take long i think i did maybe like five or six pushes now again like i said i did have a lot of help i had an episiotomy forceps and a kiwi so i really didn't do a lot but let me show you this photo look how bad his poor little face was look how swollen his little face was and he was bruised for days after on his face like absolutely bruised i felt so bad he must have been in so much pain like you can already see the bruise forming on his lips it was bad it was bad he looked a bit rough for a couple of days it was mad i just did five or six pushes he was out and he was placed on me like pretty much near enough straight away it was just an amazing experience like i instantly started crying joseph instantly started crying i think it was just because i had wanted to vaginally give birth my whole life and after having oliver i really didn't think it was going to happen and while i really wanted to be back this time i know they're not always achievable and i know that a lot of the time with hospitals they don't want you having them um because obviously it's more of a risk for them as well so i just had kind of prepared myself for a c-section and the fact that i was able to push him out and give birth to him like vaginally is an experience i will never ever ever forget and i think as well because sorry he is having a nightmare of a time here and i think because I had been through a section before I was just even more grateful to be able to go through a vaginal birth and I remember Ashlyn just being like you did it you did it like well done and just her pray like guys I can't even explain how grateful I am for her she is an amazing 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 midwife if anyone's going to Hollistry and you I know you're not able to request midwives but if you end up with Ashlyn just know you are so blessed with an amazing midwife and you just know that you are going to be in the best hands she's going to do absolutely everything to get give you the birth that you want and she just kept being like well done like you did it you pushed him out and i just i was bawling crying and i just kept saying to her thank you like this is all thanks to you i was like thank you thank you it's like you helped me i was like i literally was sobbing to her like i didn't wasn't even looking at joseph i don't think i saw joseph for a while i just kept thanking her while everything was going on i was just like thank you like you're the reason that this is happening like, thank you so much you've no idea like sobbing to this lady then anyways he got taken away he got checked over because obviously uh we had a lot going on down there and then it was really funny so after they were starting to like stitch me up and like that the anesthesiologist turned to me and he goes are you allergic to anything i was like yeah just to chlor. and he goes and uh what happens when you take this to chlor? and i was like my throat closes up and he goes he looks at the other anesthesiologist that was there and was like okay i'll be right back he was like i just need to get some medication they had obviously given me something that had disticlor in it and started like counteracting it and started pumping me full of meds and it was so funny because the doctor who was actually the doctor that delivered oliver funny enough the doctor turned around and was like they were just all chatting they were like why are you doing this like the anesthesiologist i think he he had me like really prepped for a section and the doctor was kind of like why are you doing this like everyone was questioning him and it was just so funny because he was just pumping me full of different things like i had obviously the like epidural top up he also gave me um like morphine like he was giving me everything but then i ended up feeling so sick i had to get um joseph to take out there and I ended up nearly puking in. He put like a bowl beside me and I was just gagging into it. But because I hadn't eaten at all pretty much since the bagel at like 3am that morning, I was like throwing up uh, nothing into this bowl. So then after that, they just stitched me up. My battery's gonna die. And they put a sheet over me to stitch me up, but then forgot that the massive light that was above me that they hadn't turned on was reflective and I could actually see everything that they were doing, which was quite funny. And thankfully, I'm not squeamish or anything. That was fun. Got to see myself being stitched up down there. And then, yeah, we got brought into recovery. And I will say, though, we had a bit of a nightmare in recovery. I had a really high temperature, but I couldn't feel it. Like, I wasn't feeling hot, I wasn't feeling cold, 
I was just really, really tired. I nearly fell asleep multiple times in recovery. Uh, I was that exhausted because again, like I said, I pretty much had only gotten sleep of three hours between 10 and one the night before. So I was exhausted from being in labor for so long and from being on so little sleep. Once eventually my temperature came down a couple of hours later, they then put me back into the, like, what's it called? Postnatal ward. What's the word? Like, after you give birth ward. But we stayed for one night, two nights. One night. We stayed for two nights. Um, and that was just because of the situation of my temperature. They just had to make sure that I was all okay. And then I was nearly going to end up with a blood transfusion. But thankfully I didn't. My iron levels were extremely low. Which I also think contributed to how tired I was. But um, yeah, then we got to go home. But guys, that is my successful, in my opinion, successful V-Box story. No matter how much intervention there was. So we have our little boy. I'll show you him real quick before this dies. This is our little boy this is our thing i'm gonna end this here now because my camera's literally about to die but that is my successful v-back story i really hope you guys enjoyed hearing about it i thoroughly enjoyed my experience and would 10 out of 10 do it again if i was going to have another baby which i am not but yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to give it a big thumbs up make sure you subscribe and yeah i'm planning on doing a postpartum q a so if you have any questions about the v back leave them down below or look out my instagram stories for a question box coming soon thank you for watching and i will see you in my next video bye